Greetings and welcome to this mini lecture on examples of gender, sex, and sexuality in popular culture. In this mini lecture we're just going to take a look at a couple different examples where we see um, some interesting discussions or representations of gender, sex, and sexuality uh, in relation to the previous video as we were talking about. So the first that we'll talk about here is, I think, wrestling. Uh, wrestling is a fascinating study in gender. Uh, you could also say sexuality in, in some ways because, of course, we have these hyper-masculine men uh, who are quite aggressive, who are violent, whose goal is to, of course, pin other men into submission. And sometimes you do have female wrestlers involved, and of course there's a whole other element once you get female wrestlers involved to explore there. But I think as an example of, of masculine, you know, we see these char we see these people as, as um extremely masculine characters and in some ways they they are supposed to represent idealized man uh, because of course the idealized man can wrestle or can get other men to submit uh, so I think in Western culture and in American culture you know the emphasis and the interest and the appeal of professional wrestling is fascinating because of course it tells us something about where we place our values as what in what it means to be a man, what it means to be masculine or male in our culture. Another great example and one that I, I'm really surprised to see how well it did um, or has done over the years is Glee. Uh, here's a fascinating show by Ryan Murphy. Uh, Ryan Murphy also did Nip Tuck, which is another great show that I've talked about in this course that talks about and plays with identity. Uh, but I think you know the the variety of characters we see on Glee and the variety of different uh, sexualities and genders and attractions is absolutely fascinating uh, in the ways in which these you do really see um, some interesting identity development that occurs in this show that of course gosh 10 years ago 15 years ago 20 years ago would not be would not happen on television we would see, you know, in the 90s and in the 2000s, we did see mention or we did see some discussion around uh, gender, sex, and sexuality in varying degrees. But to see this being a struggle or see, see that this is, a, this is a show that looks at teenagers and how they find their sexuality and identity is absolutely fascinating. Uh, and it's a great show to explore around those lines and to think about identity as presented in the show. Uh, Torchwood is another fascinating show uh, with Captain Jack Harkness, who, through the series, you know, is a character that's clearly bisexual in nature. He is both with women and men, um, and it's it's a very interesting element to have a male lead and a very a very masculine male lead. That Harkness is clearly a a male. Uh, or I should say clearly masculine. He is the leader, he's always the one fighting, he's often the one saving the day, um, but he isn't necessarily associated, you know, his, his masculinity or his, his gender isn't necessarily um, as stereotyped to his sexuality as has happened in the past. Ellen is probably another great example of, of looking at uh, looking at sexuality and as a uh, initially an actor an actress comedian who started with a TV show and eventually you know her coming out on uh, a TV show a sitcom that she was doing and then eventually that rolling into uh, a, a talk show that in fact has probably done a significant amount of um, positive good for different types of identities and that she has on this talk show really been shown as a non-threatening element uh, you know there's often the joke like how could you hate Helen uh, how could you hate Ellen and I think that's a very interesting place to look at within our culture of how through her the the mystification around other identities have become normalized or have become non-threatening compared to how they were in the past Chaz Bono, the uh, what the the person who transitioned from uh, female or into male uh, was on Dancing with the Stars, is the child of Sonny and Cher Bono, uh, and you know his his transition in the media from female to male and understanding how and what that meant. It, you know, it's an interesting. Uh, 
thing to see in our culture in which it's happened but it hasn't been exploited as narratives of transsexuals have in the past. If you take a look at the history of transsexuals, often whenever you had a well-known person of some sort or other going through this transition, it was it was sensationalized to a degree that uh, Bono's experience hasn't happened. In fact, I read Bono's biography or, or memoir, and it was very interesting to kind of hear him talk about you know, how th it was very different than, in some ways, than what he had anticipated. Orange is the New Black is a fascinating show in and of itself, but I think if you look at the show in terms of sexuality, gender, uh, and sex, it becomes even more so in kind of how characters either within the context of prison change some of what they do or how they approach their gender and sexuality as well as how some um, find it and are, are still fixed by it. I like that there's fluid for some and then there's not fluid for others. RuPaul, um, as a celebrity for decades now, uh, has continued to make us think differently about gender and sexuality. Uh, shows like, you know, RuPaul's Drag Race and things like that have gotten us to really uh, th understand uh, things such as uh, gender performance quite differently than what it would have been understood 30 years ago. And certainly throughout the country, uh, gay pride parades, or pride parades as they're increasingly referred to because they represent a wide spectrum of uh, gender, sex, and sexuality identities have also become things of, have become big events. They're not events that are just there for those populations, quote unquote, but they're, they're opportunities for everybody to come out and celebrate. And I'm increasingly amazed at how big these events get and how many more people keep showing up. And it's, it's a great example to see kind of this intersection in, in times and points at which our culture is less sees um, non-heterosexual identities increasingly less threatening. And then, of course, we come back to sports again and looking at football. Uh, there's been some progress, I guess we could say, around football and it's kind of where it sits within the culture. It's still a very hyper-masculine and typically a very hyper-heterosexual uh, sport um, and it, it very much promotes that in a lot of ways and there is certainly there's been some progress made but I think typically when you look at it as a sport it, it is it is like wrestling it is essentially promoting and emphasizing the importance of being masculine and with that a lot of emphasis on heterosexuality and I think the best example or the best way of, of thinking about that is of course you know when you look at the football you know the football players they go hand in hand with the cheerleaders and the expectations around cheerleaders to be females and what it means if a if a cheerleader is male and, and the questions arouse like it's the emphasis in this arena is very much on heterosexuality on masculinity um, in kind of the, the ways in which culture has traditionally viewed those. One other example, because uh, I mentioned it in, it, it's one of the other videos that we'll be watching today is, or uh, watching in um, this module, is Ms. Pac-Man. And kind of the ideas around why or how does Pac, you go from Pac-Man to Ms. Pac-Man, and what does that represent in terms of gender, in terms of sexuality within video games. Um, there's a series called Feminist Frequency on YouTube that talks a lot about this uh, and does so in some really great and insightful ways and I would recommend checking out that channel because there's a lot to be explored. Um, in Feminist Frequency has a very good strong analysis of gender and sex and sexuality in video games and so Ms. Pac-Man is another place where we could talk about gender and sexuality um, as presented even in video games because there's there's a long history of that that dates back now 30 years. Okay, those are all the examples. I hope um, you can start to see and think about the ways in which gender, sex, and sexuality appear or are negotiated or represented in different areas of popular culture. I'd love to hear some of your examples, uh, either by posting them in the open forum or by uh, posting them in the comments on this YouTube video.
Thank you very much.